Hi, I'm Tim and welcome to this video. If you've been following along recently with my three-part Home Assistant and SM Light SLZB-MR3 Zigbee and Thread Coordinator video series, then you'll know that in part two, I showed you how to set up ZHA, which is Zigbee Home Automation, and integrate this into Home Assistant so that you could set up and use a Zigbee network. Well, someone mentioned they preferred to use Zigbee to MQTT. Well, in this alternative to my part two video, I'm going to show you how to use Zigbee to MQTT instead of using ZHA. So if you prefer to use Zigbee to MQTT instead of ZHA, then keep watching this video and I'll show you how to set up that in Home Assistant and link it to the SM Lite SLZB-MR3. Also, if you haven't been following along with my series and you just want to know how to set up a Zigbee network using Zigbee to MQTT in Home Assistant, then this video is for you as well. So we'll get right to it now, hop onto the computer behind me. And as you can probably see, I've already logged into Home Assistant ready, so we'll get started right now. And here we are. And as you can see, I've logged into Home Assistant and I'm at the overview or dashboard. Now you can see I've already adopted the SLZB MR1 and also the SLZB MR3. Now these were under detected devices. So if we go to settings, devices and services, they were in the list here. So all I did was click the add button for the devices showing up and then they were put into the list of devices, which you'll see here in these two rows. So we'll just go back to the dashboard. So click overview and it takes you back to the dashboard. And then what we'll do is first we need to install and add the Mosquito Broker. So it's MQTT. So to do this, we go to settings at the left hand side, select add-ons. Then what we're going to do is click the add-on store button at the bottom right corner here. Then in the search bar, which is here, click in there and we're going to search for MQTT and you'll see that we get the Mosquito Broker, an open source MQTT broker. So click on this and then what we're going to do is click on install and this will then proceed to install MQTT. So now you'll see it's installed it and we've got some options. So we've got start on boot and also watchdog. So what we're going to do is leave start on boot enabled. But what we're going to do is enable watchdog. So click the slider and it will turn blue. Now for auto update, if you prefer to have your integrations and add-ons automatically updated, then just turn this slider blue. However, I just prefer to do manual updates. It's just a personal preference. And the way I look at it is if something is working, then there's no need to update it. But obviously I do do the updates to add more features and so on, but I prefer to do those manually. So it's your choice whether you choose to just have auto update enabled and let the system update itself. So once you've done that, all we need to do is click on the start button and this will then start the mosquito broker and as you'll see we've got add-on cpu usage and the graph appeared and also the add-on ram which is 0.2 percent so once we've done that what we need to do is restart home assistant now it's always best to do these restarts after you install everything just to keep everything refreshed and so that you've got the interface with everything started automatically so to do the reboot, we go to settings, go to system, and then in the top right corner, you'll see we've got like a power button icon. Click on this, and then you'll get the pop-up window. So all we need to do is click on restart home assistant. And then with the confirmation restart home assistant, this will interrupt all running automations and script. Click the restart button and just wait for home assistant to restart. Now it all depends on what your hardware is like and how powerful it is for how long it will take to restart Home Assistant and of course how many integrations and add-ons and things you've got loaded. So it's saying Home Assistant is starting, not everything will be available until this is finished. So it's now saying Home Assistant has started. 
So now what we're going to do is install Zigbee to MQTT. So to do this, we'll go to settings again, and then what we'll do is go to add-ons, and again, select the add-on store. Then what we're going to do is in the top right corner, click on the three dots. And then what we're going to do is select repositories. And then with the manage add-on repositories window that pops up, we're going to enter a new repository. Now, this is what you need to enter in the add box. So in the add box, you should have https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash zigbee2 so that's the number two mqtt and then forward slash hasio h-a-s-s-i-o and then hyphen zigbee2mqtt and again two is the number two so if you can't remember that link, then I'll also put that link so you can copy and paste it from the video description. So once you've entered that, you click the add button and you'll now see that we've got Home Assistant add-on Zigbee to MQTT. Now I've got Hacks add-on repository as well. Now you may or may not have that depending on how you set up Home Assistant and if you've added or not added the Hacks add-on repository. If you haven't and you want to know how to add Hacks Adam repository, then take a look in my Home Assistant playlist and you'll find that there's an instructional video there showing you how to add Hacks Add-on repository. So once you've added the Home Assistant add-on for Zigbee to MQTT, we can then click close. Then what we're going to do is refresh the web page. Now to do this on Windows, you need to hold down the control key and press F5 and it will then refresh the add-on store page. Then in the search bar at the top, what we're going to do is click in there, and we're going to search again for MQTT, and you should then see that in addition to Mosquito Broker, which we previously just installed, we've also now got some other search results. So we've got Zigbee to MQTT, Zigbee to MQTT Edge, and also Zigbee to MQTT Proxy. So what we need to do is click on Zigbee to MQTT and it says use your Zigbee devices without the vendor's bridge or gateway. So this is the one you should be selecting and not the edge or proxy. So click on Zigbee to MQTT, then click on the install option and then wait for Zigbee to MQTT to install itself. Now this does take a minute or two, so it is a bit longer adding this add-on than it is for some other common add-ons so just wait and be patient for it to install and as you can see it did take a few seconds longer than installing mqtt so what we need to do is you'll see that start on boot is enabled so the blue slider is blue and then what we need to do is and also enable watchdog so click the icon and it will turn the slider blue and then again whether you choose to auto update or not is up to you. So if you want to auto update, just turn this slider blue. But also what we're going to do is show in sidebar. So I would recommend having this show in sidebar so that the Zigbee to MQTT menu option appears here in this sidebar. So all you need to do when you want to add devices is just click on that option and it'll take you straight in to the screen to add your Zigbee devices. So I would certainly recommend enabling showing sidebar, which we'll do. So we'll turn that blue. And as you can see, Zigbee to MQTT has now just appeared in the sidebar. So now that we've enabled those options, what we need to do is go to the configuration page at the top. And then in the configuration page, what we need to do is click in the serial line here. So click in where it says number one in the serial section. And then what we're going to do is in another tab, you'll see that I've got my SLZB MR3 control panel loaded. So what you need to do is just load up your control panel for your MR3. Then what we're going to do at the left side menu options is select Z2M and ZHA. So once you're in that Z2M and ZHA screen, you will see that we've got two sections, one for the EFR32 MG24 chip, so that's being used for matter over thread, which you'll see in part three of my video series. 
but for the CC2674P10, this is what's controlling the Zigbee network. So what we need to do is where you see the section that says port and then TCP and then SLZB, we need to highlight that section and then highlight board rate and also adapter Z stack. So what you should do is highlight those three lines starting with port and TCP down to adapter and Z stack. So copy those, go back to your home assistant page and then in the serial line, so for line number one, we're going to paste in that information. Now you'll see we've got port, TCP, SLZB, MR37638, board rate, and then adapter Z stack. So you'll see that there's various spaces being added in the lines. So what we need to do is remove those spaces so that they're all lined up correctly, starting with under the first character of port. So just click in the line and then use the delete key to remove those extra spaces before the start of each line so that you should have it looking like this. So it should say port colon space TCP colon forward slash forward slash SLZB hyphen MR3 colon 7638 and then in line two board rate colon space 115200 and then in line three it should be adapter colon space Z stack. So now what we're going to do is for the port where it starts with SLZB MR3, in some cases you can leave this as SLZB hyphen MR3, but in some cases it will not load or connect to your Zigbee SM light coordinator. Now what I've found is the best option is to remove the SLZB hyphen MR3 and replace it with the IP address of the SLZB MR3. So to do this, what we need to do is go back to the other tab. And then what we're going to do is click on dashboard for our SLZB MR3 control panel or whichever SLZB Zigbee coordinator you're using. And you will see if you scroll down to the ethernet status, you'll see we've got an IP address. So what I find is if we copy the IP address, go back to the home assistant page, and then remove the SLZB hyphen MR3 and replace it with the IP address. So what we'll do is just paste in the IP address and you will now see that we've got port colon space TCP colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of my Zigbee coordinator. Now of course your Zigbee coordinator IP address will be different so just replace it with the IP address and then after the IP address you need to leave the colon and leave the port number. So make sure that you still have colon and then for example 7638 or 6638 depending on which Zigbee coordinator you're using. So once you've got that information in there with the port, TCP and IP address, board rate 115200 and adapter Z stack, just like I'm showing you on screen now, you can then hit the save button here. Then again, hit the save button and it should then turn gray. So it should be grayed out. So that means it's successfully saved all that information in the serial port section. So now what we're going to do is go back to the info page. So click on info at the top. And then what we're going to do is click on the start button to start the Zigbee to MQTT add-on. So just click start and then you'll see we've got add-on CPU usage graph and also add-on RAM usage, which currently mine is saying 0.3%. Then what we're going to do is at the left-hand side sidebar, we're going to select Zigbee to MQTT. After a few seconds, you will see that we now get a Zigbee to MQTT onboarding page. So all you need to do is just scroll right to the bottom and you will see we've got a submit bar. So click on submit. And then it will say Zigbee to MQTT onboarding settings saved. Zigbee to MQTT is now starting. You can close this page. So what we need to do is then we'll go back to the dashboard. So click the overview tab. So once you've gone back to your overview screen, then what we'll do is just wait a few seconds. And then what we're going to do is select Zigbee to MQTT again. Now, once you click on Zigbee to MQTT, 
you should now be presented with your usual Zigbee to MQTT screen where it will show you once adopted your Zigbee devices. So if you get the page that I'm showing you on screen at the moment, it means that it's successfully added and configured the Zigbee to MQTT add-on. So all you need to do now is add your Zigbee devices and to do this all you need to do is put your device in pairing mode and then all you need to do is click the permit join all button here and then any device that's in pairing mode it will then appear in this list here. So for example what I'll do is power on a inner SP242 smart plug and then it should appear in the list here. So we'll just turn on the smart plug now, put it in pairing mode, and then once you've put the device in pairing mode, you can then click the permit join all button. And you will now see that we've got the inner SP242 smart plug successfully added onto our Zigbee network via the Zigbee to MQTT add-on. So here you'll see that we've got number one, and we've got the picture of the smart plug, the friendly name, which of course is just random characters from the actual official device name. So you can actually change this by clicking on the friendly name. This will take you into the smart plug settings. So if you want to rename the device where it says friendly name here, and then the random characters, you'll see we've got a square with a pen. So click this. Then in the friendly name pop-up box, you can just give it a name, for example, smart plug. And what you need to do is enable the slider for update home assistant entity ID and then click the rename device button. Then you'll see that we've changed the friendly name to smart plug. So if we go back to devices by clicking devices at the top of the screen, it will then show the friendly name now as smart plug. So that means it successfully added the device via the Zigbee to MQTT add-on into our Zigbee network. So what we need to do is now that we've finished adding devices, what we'll do is click on disable join all. That will stop putting Zigbee to MQTT into the pairing mode. Now, personally, I think I like Zigbee to MQTT better than ZHA, although they both actually do the same thing by creating a Zigbee network and connecting all your Zigbee devices together. But I find this interface a lot cleaner for Zigbee to MQTT rather than ZHA Zigbee Home Automation. So that will do it for this video. Hope you found this video useful and keep a lookout as more videos are coming again soon. So bye for now.